where that that's where the intersection between the regulation of this system to enhance their own regulations might actually be interesting. So because they could do small things like say, well, if you're in the United States, since we're going to put lots of legal notice on you because you're in the United States, you have to register that address if you want to be above board. And if you we find out you've been doing it with offshore addresses, you're going to have tax implications right. just like you would typically. But I don't necessarily think that the government and existing legal and financial structure is going to hate this idea for the core. I think the core is very interesting to it. It's more about the details of implementation. Okay, very much. Uh, I, sorry, I, I think some people would say that you know maybe um, we, we can somehow merge our interests with, with what uh, a government has in its mind. But I don't personally. I don't believe that you know government uh, would really love this idea. I don't believe they are. I think they are very inert. All right, and uh, that might be wrong. Yeah. I, hi. Uh, uh, hello. hello. This is brilliant. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's one issue, and as maybe the, 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 the least uh, technical person in the room about, uh, about Bitcoin, I, I, the answer is obvious. Your problem is transparency. And it's not transparency for government. You can figure out all, all that other stuff. It's transparency um, in terms of kind of the sort of typical pump and dump scheme. You know, I can say, hey, things are going great, 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 and sell all my shares, and you don't know it. Regulations are really not about government interfering. It's about just ensuring some sort of fairness. And so you could have a fair system We've invested in venture capitalists, we've invested in systems that are outside um, the, the traditional framework, but that trust is the most important thing. So what's the mechanism that you could put in here for transparency and trust so that you know that I'm issuing shares for my company, um, that I am not manipulating something and then front-running the market to be able to get out, or I'm holding back good news and I'm buying a whole bunch of stuff because I know that I just got a big order from somebody. Right. So. Um First of all, let's let's um, talk about the fact that uh, the current system is not exactly very transparent, especially for those who are not um, too familiar with it, right? Um, so me, for example, I'm not familiar with the system, so if I started uh, like getting into it, I would find myself learning a lot of things and people doing things behind the scenes. Uh, but uh, the, the, way, the way that the transparency is achieved is by having uh, certain rules that everybody knows you know, how they work because they are implemented in actual code. And everybody you can't do it in anonymity, though. Oh, right. That's the thing. You cannot do it in anonymity. No, you have just addresses, right, to which those rules apply. But you don't, but you don't, if you don't know that I am the person who knows more than you, there's information asymmetry. If you can't address that information asymmetry by putting some mechanism around that to make sure that, you know, that I, if I'm doing something, yeah. It says, you know, you know that I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. so there are limits on what I can do without everybody understanding. I definitely agree with the fact that, you know, for some rules, for implementing some of the rules, you can you can implement them automatically, and you have don't, you can have anonymity for those rules. But I would say that we, you know, that we can't achieve anonymity with with at least some of the rules. So I think it's it's a questionable statement. Um, Connect is a rule for any owner of shares, and that creates that transparency because it connects an identity and the actual transaction. So it loses the anonymity of the concept, but it connects it to the social world. So that could create the trust needed. So there, like there are people that don't use Facebook. Yeah, at at least on the issuer side, it can't be anonymous. Right. Otherwise, I could sell shares in Bill Gates's house. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think so. Uh, that's um, at least a, use a third yeah. party. On the issuing bank. side, right. it's yeah. somebody really easy account. to um, to ensure that the issuer of a of a particular blockchain asset is a particular person. We already have this um, idea, and it's used on the internet so much for any any site you go to that says HTTPS, you can get a you can get a certificate that verifies your identity, there's, there's a bunch of well-known companies that their lives would be over if they, if they forged certificates. So if, you, if you're going to create a blockchain asset, if you're going to say, okay, I'm making a new kind of thing that is issuing shares of my company, that, that action, which if I'm understanding the proposal correctly, that action goes on the blockchain. 
It's something that the network remembers. If that includes a signature signed with a, a digital certificate from well-known CA, then it verifies, okay, this is actually the person who issued this, who issued the security. And it's trivial, and most people do things this way in a, for instance, a, a web browser. If you're going to make a non-technical client, a client for people who are maybe uh, who, who are used to using a used to using an exchange, but knowledge, knowledge of te technology not so much, and and you and you try to and, and you search for a particular um, a particular security, and it isn't and it isn't signed by anybody. That's easy to give them a big red warning and say, hey, this this could be issued by. Um, some guy on an island somewhere nobody's ever heard of. This, this, this could be issued by a demon. We have no way to know. Uh, I think that the central question is, is not you know, the identity, but rather the reputation. I mean, reputation uh, does not mean that we can't have anonymity, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't, make, it doesn't matter if I uh, tell you what my name is, but rather what my reputation is. Well, it may mean, matter, right, for a certain enforcement of, of some rules, but uh, that is not, huh? Okay. Um, yeah, for Bitcoin, we'll mine the coins on the shares. In this case, you're talking about selling shares for a money for a company. So you're planning on re uh, computing every share within the blockchain before you start? No. Yeah, yeah I mean. The, the, the blockchain assets, other than whatever the, um, whatever, like, let's say that you have a blockchain. In Bitcoin, the Blockchain assets are created as part of the mining process. Presumably, to run a blockchain, you need such a blockchain asset. But the proposal is additional blockchain assets that people can create ex nihilo from nothing that are that are not the unit of exchange, but whatever they're defined to be in the creation transaction, in the, tra in the transaction that creates these things. Uh, well, this is all really. Interesting, and it's interesting to hear you talk about Yeah, I guess we're out of time right now. Uh, we are running out, but... Uh, yeah, so thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for the questions. And uh, again, I hope that's part of a couple of ideas that uh, may be useful. Thanks a lot. The next slide the session starts at 10.15, and if you're interested in anything that the speakers have talked about, there will be a representative from the C-Setting Institute a little bit.